So far, we have been learning uh, about sets, empty sets. Um, so let me write those here. So, so far, we have learned about sets, uh, empty sets. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. So sets. And then we have learned about unions and intersections. So, and we also learned what this symbol meant, which means it's an element of, element of. So a good way of remembering what these symbols are in case you are for some reason getting confused with them is, well, the U, so this symbol looks like a U. So you can just remember it as, well, this unionizes material, unionize. And the, the, upside, the, the upside down U is intersecting. I think it should be more than clear by now what these symbols mean and I hope we can move forward. So something that my professor introduced to us while I was learning real, real analysis was Russell's uh, paradox. It's a very interesting paradox. And let me, let me introduce it to you because it would not be fair if I taught you real analysis without talking about Russell. So let's talk about this. So uh, Russell, um, so let's write this down. Russell's, Russell's, Paradox. So, what does this paradox say? Let's let's write it. Let R, let R, be the set of all sets which don't contain themselves, which don't contain themselves them themselves so what does this look like so r is a set which includes so it's a set of all the sets so it's sets that don't contain themselves that's what this looks like as of this moment so the question is, is R an element of R? And that's what the paradox is. Um, how you want to think about this is there are two sides to this, right? Of course. So if R is, so let's look at case one. So let's go back here. So case one, case one, if R is in R, that would mean that R, so R is an element of R, and we know what R is. R is all the sets that don't contain themselves. Well, if R is an element of R, then this denotes that R is not a set of itself. However, R is being an element of R. So how could... How does this work? So if in, in case you are a little bit confused, let me let me rewrite this so you can understand it better. So R is the set of the sets that don't so who are not sets uh, who, who are not elements of themselves. So sets who um, uh, do not contain themselves contain them selves so the question is the question uh, is that is r uh, an element of r and let's say somebody comes along and says that's the answer that yes it is so that means that r is an element of r however that what does this mean then r is a part of the set it's inside of the set which you know describes all sets who don't contain themselves who don't contain th themselves themselves however if it's a element of this if if r is an element of this it implies so i'm doing it the wrong way but it, i hope you can understand this that if r is an element of r then clearly r is not an element of r because sets who don't 
contain themselves. So this is clearly, this clearly contradicts. I think you can clearly see that, that this is, is not, um, is, does not match this and, 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 and this fails. So it cannot be yes. Yes is completely wrong. So yes is wrong. So now another person comes along. So this is another answer and somebody says no, it isn't. So you say R is not an element of R. However, that means that R, so let's say R is not an element of R. So we know what R is. R is a set of the sets who don't contain themselves. Contain themselves. So if R is inside of this set, that means, what does that mean? That means R cannot be, it cannot contain itself. So therefore, R is not an element of R. Okay, so that's good. So that's what this means. However, if it is, so R cannot be within this. However, if it's not containing itself, it's just meeting the criteria of the set R, which is sets who don't contain themselves. So what this is saying is that R is an element of R. I know it might be a little bit confusing, but the bottom line of this whole paradox is it doesn't matter which way you go. You cannot answer this question because it doesn't make sense. 